morning everyone, my name is Laura and I'm with the Nature Reserve at Rancho Mission Viejo. Today we're in Verdugo Canyon which has been recently added to the Nature Reserve, making the Nature Reserve about 8,000 acres in size. Many of you know that it's going to grow to about 21,000 acres in size. Uh, we're in this area because we're looking at one of our conserved habitats and we're here to assess the health of this riparian system. We do this um, uh, once every three years across all of our riparian areas that are inside the habitat reserve. This is our first year here, so we're gonna be establishing a baseline condition. I'm Jay, I'm an ecologist who's been doing cram assessments out on the RMV preserve for about eight years now. A cram assessment is like a physical for a riparian area. Whenever we come back, we're scoring different attributes, looking at the health of the area. Um, and it's really a framework for us to rapidly assess the quality of the habitat, if there's any influences that are coming in that maybe need some management. We've seen some things that are really positive um, for habitat that's being enrolled into the reserve. We're seeing a high amount of diversity of plants and uh, habitat types, uh, which is just really exciting when we're here assessing um, riparian areas throughout the reserve. Um, this is one that's scoring very highly and one that is likely to function and provide a lot of ecosystem services um, to wildlife in the location here, but also ecosystem services downstream as the water moves from Verdugo Canyon into San Juan Creek. I'm Lindsay, I'm a restoration ecologist and biologist, and I've been doing monitoring and assessments out at the reserve for the last about three years. This reach of Verdugo Canyon, um, it flows into San Juan Creek, but primarily this is just an intermittent system that has natural hydrology um, influences, which is pretty rare in Southern California. We're doing a cram assessment in the upstream reach of Verdugo Canyon. We are assessing the same metrics as we have been all day, looking at um, you know buffer and landscape context. We're looking at the hydrology of the system as well as the biotic structure, what species are occurring in this area. What's exciting about seeing these types of things is the vegetation can really tell us a lot about what's going on. And this species right here is one of our interesting indicators that we're picking up in this upper AA in Verdugo Canyon. Um, this is a scale broom and it's an indicator for flashy hydrology and um, riparian settings, uh, but also very dry settings. So it's telling us that we're up in the watershed, we're, we're likely to be seeing um, low flows during the winter, um, followed by stochastic high flood events and it can also produce um, very deep roots so it can tap into the water table when the rest of the surface water drops out. Um, but this is one of the ones that we see around Southern California frequently in settings like this and it teaches us a lot about that hydrology. As we come back over, over the years, that vegetation being modified will indicate how the hydrology is changing over time and we'll be able to score the biotic variables associated with those vegetation types. Now we're here in San Juan Creek by Cow Camp Road. Um, this assessment area is really interesting. It's on the main stem of the San Juan Creek. The drought in the recent years has allowed us um, to watch this area as the conditions change. Our cram is showing us that the hydrology has shifted um, to be much drier. A lot of the species that are occurring here that are dead are obligate wetland species, meaning that they um, need to be growing within standing water or within really shallow uh, water table. Obviously, there's not much we can do about a drought, uh, but we can continue monitoring these AAs every three years to check for invasive species that are coming in and watch how the habitat changes over time um, as the climatic conditions change. And as you can see here, there's quite a bit of cattail and willow dieback that has occurred because of the drought conditions that we've had here over the last, um, you know, three to six years. And 
this system is used to having quite a bit of perennial surface flow and because of the drought conditions everything has dried up and that's actually a very interesting point here because you know there's quite a bit of development throughout this area and there's new development as well so you would expect there to be runoff um, and you know an increase in hydrology throughout the dry season but because of the significant drought we've been in we're seeing quite a bit of dieback and it is affecting this riparian system. So at the end of the day, all of these assessment areas give us the opportunity to see how they change over time. It really ends up being a culture of care for the land and making sure that the natural habitat is functioning at a high level and ensuring that RMV can do the management work that they need to do in order to make sure that these native habitats remain high quality for generations to come.